I'm here today with Dr. Jennifer Churchill, Research Assistant Professor at the University of North Texas Center for Human Identification. Much of Jennifer's work has really revolved around bringing, bringing mitochondrial DNA analysis using MPS into the Center's Missing Persons Unit. Thank you for joining us today, Jennifer. Absolutely. So can you tell me a little bit about the mission of the Missing Persons Unit? Yes, the Missing Persons Unit at uh, UNT Health Science Center's Center for Human Identification is part of an accredited laboratory that specializes in genetic analysis of skeletal remains and any other evidence collected in a missing or unidentified person's investigation. And since its establishment, the Missing Persons Unit has assisted in thousands of missing persons investigations across the country. And how does mitochondrial DNA analysis really play a role in making these critical identifications? Well, the mitochondrial genome has a number of features that are very beneficial to forensic investigations. And particularly, the mitochondrial genome's high, higher copy number per cell compared to the nuclear genome offers an increased sensitivity that's particularly useful when analyzing challenged or degraded remains, especially in instances where those remains offered li little to no results with uh, autosomal markers in, when analyzing nuclear DNA. Additionally, the mitochondrial genome's maternal inheritance and well-characterized phylogeny offer important lineage and bioancestry information that is useful um, in the course of forensic investigations. So Jennifer, you've been working with MPS of mitochondrial DNA analysis for a couple of years now, really as one of the, the leading adopters into bringing this into forensics casework. What can you tell us about your use of the Precision ID mitochondrial DNA panels, the Ion Chef, and the Ion S5 systems? Massively parallel sequencing technologies really make it feasible for um, the entire mitochondrial genome to be sequenced in forensic genetic laboratories. And large multiplex small amplicon panels um, that amplify the entire mitochondrial genome, like the Precision ID mito panel were designed for the types of challenge and degraded remains that you often encounter in forensic investigations. And when you combine this panel with the Ion Chef and the Ion S5, you have a highly automated workflow that really limits, hand, limits the amount of hands-on time that an analyst has to contribute and really minimizes those, inter, those user introduced variabilities. So as more laboratories are thinking about bringing um, MPS into their laboratories. I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to know some differences and similarities between MPS and Sanger sequencing workflows for MITO. What are your thoughts on that? Well, currently a lot of forensic genetic laboratories that um, look at mitochondrial sequencing use Sanger technologies. And this, with um, the time consuming and laborious nature of these technologies, often cause laboratories to focus on a, only a portion of that mitochondrial genome, HV1 and HV2. And due to the time-consuming nature, they are often leaving out a large amount of variation within the coding region. And also, the Sanger sequencing technologies are not su quantitative enough to sufficiently resolve mitochondrial DNA mixtures. Massively parallel sequencing, on the other hand, offers opportunities to address each of these limitations, and you can sequence the entire mitochondrial genome in one reaction without consuming additional sample. You can also sequence, the, when sequencing the entire mitochondrial genome, you have an opportunity for higher power of discrimination and higher resolution when looking at mitochondrial genomes, and you have opportunities for mixture uh, deconvolution. That being said, you know, there are a number of steps in those two workflows that are similar. The DNA quantification, DNA extraction, you know, the process of your PCR reaction for amplifying the mitochondrial genome are all steps that your analysts are going to be familiar with and help ease them into their massively parallel sequencing training. And for laboratories who are just thinking about bringing mito in, so, so they really haven't done mitochondrial DNA analysis, what words of wisdom would you offer to them? Well, if you're considering mitochondrial sequencing with massively parallel sequencing technologies, um, I would say that it's, it's never too early to get started. 
you know, and I recommend talking to your analysts about the benefits of massively parallel sequencing and putting articles about massively parallel sequencing on their reading list, starting their training for, um, you know, the workflow, the lab work, and the software involved in massively parallel sequencing. Also, I recommend collaboration. If you're interested in implementing this technology, I recommend reaching out to other labs who have started the process and learn from what they've done. Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us today. It's certainly a very exciting time to be in forensic DNA analysis. Yes, ma'am. And to learn more, please visit us at thermofisher.com slash HID.